So Alien Romulus, one of the films that I most anticipated for this year. Fantastic. Um, what do I think of it? Do I hate it? Or has it actually washed the sour taste that was left in my mouth after Prometheus and Covenant? Let us find out now in my review, which is going to be spoiler free and spoiler. So let's do it. So Freddy Alvarez is in the director's chair for this new Alien film, Alien Romulus, which runs for just shy of two hours with a 15 rating here in the UK. It stars Kaylee Spaney, David Johnson, Archie Renault and Isabel Merced, as well as a few other actors. I don't really know any of these, to be honest. So... Um, I know the name Kaylee Spaney. Have I seen her in something? I don't know, but there we go. So let's talk about this film. Obviously, this film is set after Alien and before the events of Aliens. And we're introduced to these characters after the opening events of the film, which show us how and why an alien has been found. I'm trying to avoid spoilers. I'll get into them in a minute, OK? Um, and then we're introduced to these characters. And they're on this, like, mining world run by Wayland Utani. And we're introduced to the main characters of Kaylee Spaney, who plays Rain, and David Johnson, who plays Andy. Andy, short for an android. No, Andy's not short for android. It's actually N-D, N-D. He's an android who comes across like a bit of a... a, a special person shall we say a simpleton in the sense that yeah he's picked on and and what it is for an android he was discovered in the trash by her parents or her dad that repaired him but he's missing a few circuits or two shall we say um, her parents are dead they died in a mining accident only they're kind of trapped on this planet and they want to get off and she feels that she has filled the quota of work she believes she's filled the quota of work for hours to get a pass off of this planet only the company Leyland Utani have increased the quotas she's going to be there for another five or six years so with a group of friends They've, they've got a spacecraft and they, they, they come to find that there's actually another spacecraft that has been abandoned coming overhead close to the orbit of this planet. And they head up there on this spacecraft that they've got. Don't ask any questions about that bit, OK? Um, they get up there, but it's not a spacecraft. It's actually the Romulus space station. Romulus and Remus. It's like two different names. It's never explained the reasons why. Who cares? Anyway, so they go on board, but... This is where they come to find that there's aliens on board. There's face huggers, there's experiments and all this sort of thing that have been going on because of this alien that was found at the beginning of the film and all hell breaks loose. Some of the other characters on board, there are, you know, you've got um, David Johnson as Andy the Android. You've got Archie Renault as Tyler, Isabel Merced as Kay, who's pregnant with... I think Tyler's kid, to be honest. Um, and, and yeah, all hell breaks loose. People get killed. There's a few other people's as well, characters as well. And yes, so anyway, let's get into spoilers in a minute. So what did I think of the film? I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Okay, it's a back to basics version of Alien. Okay, it, it doesn't really do anything new in a sense. Um, it's about, it takes about 40 minutes for us to get into any action with aliens. Um, but we learn a lot more about the world, the, the, how Wayland Utani work as a corporation, all this sort of thing. And we spend some time with these characters, although a few of them are wholly underwritten. Do you know what I mean? Like what you normally get today. But, you know, the most intriguing character, I would say, would be actually be David Johnson's Andy, the android. Um, Kaylee Spaney, as the film goes on, she comes into her own. Um, there are callbacks to several films in the franchise, which, again, I'll get into that in spoiler. But, yeah, it was a thoroughly enjoyable movie. It doesn't offer up anything new. It's got some decent body horror. 
um, the designs of the creatures, the practical effects are fantastic. Um, musical score is very good. The set designs, they, they look like they're in that used world of Alien. They, 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 it hasn't like they've, they've made things look more futuristic. It looks like the world of Alien. The ship looks like, you know, the internals of the ships look like Alien. The buttons, the consoles, all that sort of a thing. Um, it, it's good. Offers up nothing new, but great, great film. A, a return to form for the Alien franchise. Um, and I'd probably say maybe my third favourite film in the Alien franchise after Alien and Aliens, obviously. So now I want to get to talking about what I want to talk about, which is the spoilers of this film. Okay, so seriously, jump off if you don't want to know. So the film opens, the film opens with a spacecraft in space coming to life um, with Mother from Aliens, you know, and they found the wreck of the Nostromo. Not only that, they have found the alien from Alien, the one that gets jettisoned at the end of Alien with the spear in it. It's cocooned itself. They find it in a cocoon. Yeah, and I like that because it's introduced a new life cycle kind of thing for the alien. How does the alien survive in space? We know that it's a perfect organism that can survive in different environments. But what it's actually done is it's cocooned itself and they've got that alien. Then we're introduced to these characters on the planet. OK, and when they get up to the the, um, the Romulus, the space station, they come to find there's a load of face huggers on board and they come to find a destroyed android, an android that's been sort of turning, ripped in half, so to speak, um, cut off at the waist. And it is Ash. It's Ash from the first Alien film. Yes, um, Ian Holmes character, Ash, and it looks like him as well. Some of the effects are a little bit ropey at that point, a kind of, you know, it doesn't look quite spot on. It's just outside the realm of being 100%. But it's great. And he plays quite a big part in the film as well. It's not just a one and done scene. What he does at that point is some of his program, the, the robots have got a... a a sort of USB port in their neck that's covered up, shall we say, that takes these little things. And and she uses his one in her android. Now, her android, Andy, like I said, he's somewhat special, somewhat slow. And when this is put into him, he now um, becomes you know, hyper-intelligent and all this sort of a thing. But he's now working for the company. So this, this android swings both ways, so to speak, in the context of this story. Back and forth, depending on this thing in its neck and that sort of a thing, which I thought was great. Um, obviously, the Ash android is up to no good again. He wants to, he's working for the company. And as the film progresses, we come to find that... <sighs> They've got the black goo. They've got the black goo. They've 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 used the alien, the alien, because we come to find out that the alien on board, the alien from the first alien film, is dead. Obviously, events have occurred on this space station prior to them finding it. And in those events, the alien from the first alien film wrecked havoc. But after they they've they've engineered the black goo from it and this sort of a thing. Um, and they've managed to kill it. So you see the dead corpse of that alien with the spike still sticking out of it from that first film. OK, so as this film progresses, the girl who's pregnant, she ends up getting taken by an alien and cocooned. Just as an area of the ship that is completely cocooned off um, on a space station. And they've got to work their way through it. But they find her and they get her to safety. But they've got the black goo with them at the same time. And they know what the black goo can possibly do. The, the Wayland Yutani want to use it to create a perfect organism, human, to work on these planets, mining and disasters not occurring and all this sort of stuff. Do you know what I mean? Um, so she ends up injecting herself because she sees it's a way of protecting herself. And what this does at the end of the film is it opens up, as an alien film does, a new kind of alien, a new kind of alien that she births, 
she gives birth to naturally but it's kind of an egg a cocoon type thing that she births herself and when it opens up it's a human it's a human but it drops through because of acid in the cocoon and falls down a few floors and into some cargo hold and, and Kaylee Spaney her character goes after it but when she gets down there and this is the bit I don't really like and aliens it's one thing that bothers me about alien is that this thing's grown to full size within like in like heartbeat seriously only a few seconds have taken uh, uh, as a pass by and it's grown about eight foot tall it's as tall as what the engineers was and it looked like the engineers so this is prometheus comes into play at these points the black goo and that so it's not it's not rejecting prometheus as a story idea that still occurred so this alien this big thing freshly born it's got something that comes out of its mouth and i think it sucks on blood that sort of a thing you see it doing it but it looks like an engineer almost but skinnier thinner version but the face the eyes they are there so it harks back to that obviously she ends up managing to kill it and all that and and her and her brother which is the android andy go their ways um on, on this spaceship trying to get to where they want to get to to get off of this so like i said before the body horror is is quite gross at certain moments when this girl's birth in this 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 large egg essentially out of her um you don't see it coming directly out but it's 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 there do you know what i mean and um bits with acid there's a bit in zero g with acid floating around and all this sort of a thing um so yeah what you've got you've got a great film you've got a great great film that that visually looks great that that harks back to other elements of aliens that we've seen before and all this sort of a thing and yeah for two hours i thoroughly enjoyed it i thoroughly enjoyed it third best alien film you can't go wrong there's probably loads more that i'm missing you know there's a lot to take in so much to take in but i did like the kind of new the i, I liked the new um life cycle bit of the alien the cocooning right because even after the first alien is burst out of someone's chest and it obviously it runs off um they find a cocoon the cocoon in which it's in which to be honest part of it looks like a, a part of a, a woman's anatomy and then that's keeping in with the sort of phallic look of the alien and the face hugger and do you know what i mean it's, it's keeping in in tick with that so to speak and the alien full size actually comes out of this cocoon and that kind of harks to the cocoon of itself in space and i like that element i like that element of it just not the amount of time that it takes for them to do it the film does have a countdown throughout it so the film is tense all the way through in the sense that not only have they got to survive these aliens, but they've got to get off this ship before the, the space station, before the space station crashes into the rings. At the beginning of the film, the first thing I asked is, OK, why are they going up to this space station? They've had all these experiments on it and Wayland yutani aren't doing anything about it. Why aren't they going up there? And that question isn't directly answered, but in my own sort of mind canon, I answered it myself in the sense that, well, actually they know it's going to crash into these rings and be destroyed and there's nothing they can do because they know that the aliens and whatever have overrun on the vessel. Um, so that's why Wayland yutani are staying clear of it. So there's elements like that, questions that I had to fill in the blanks myself, but they do work. But overall, it's a great film. It's introduced new elements to the aliens that I enjoyed. I don't particularly like the end of these films when they have to give you a new kind of alien. Obviously, Aliens done it with a Queen Alien, which worked. Alien 3 steered clear of it. But, you know, you had the newborn in Resurrection, which I didn't particularly like. I'm not a big fan of the engineers as they looked. So for that end bit, it was kind of like, mm, OK. But it's kind of by the numbers in a sense that, yeah, it is. it, it plays out like an Alien film. So it doesn't offer up anything new like that. It's kind of like a, a high quality um, um, copy of what's come before. But no, it, it's great to have a film set within this universe with little links to what's come before, but a film with characters that aren't linked to the bigger picture of the alien universe like it always has been with Ripley and things like that. Um, so it's nice to have have and see this this other parts and more of the workings of this world which looked great so a thoroughly enjoyable film big thumbs up from me i enjoyed it i loved it 
Once you've seen it, let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comments. And I'll see you soon. Take care.